Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another BNB Quickie. Welcome to a late version of BNB Quickie. Quickies, Quickie, where Tone can do a lot of things in a half hour, but he definitely going to try to keep it under 10 minutes if he can and get back to get that nap. Just kidding. No, we don't. We, we won't go there. Uh, welcome, though. Yes, uh, very exciting to be here for this BNB Quickie. As cor- of course, it's just me, no dude. BNB Quickies will typically, as you probably by now realize, is going to be just me or him talking about something. Uh, usually stuff I talk about is really cool. He's going to talk probably about lame stuff. Go figure, right? Uh, hope everybody's good out there this evening. Thank you, everybody, for already showing up. Uh, Meg, what's happening? Uh, what up, Draston? Thank you, guys. Uh, it is, you know, <laughs> I was really surprised, okay, first of all, that the retro video game one, I guess I should have thought about that a little better because with streamers and mostly streamers voting on Twitter, it makes sense, right? Like, but nobody voted for the, the action flick. Uh, very little people voted for the toy, which yeah, I figured the retro toy would be small on that. But, you know, uh, it was actually close with a retro wrestling match. So uh, I'll get into that a little bit later on. But I was I was shocked that those were going neck and neck for a while. And really towards the end, uh, Mario Brothers 3 kind of necked out on that. So if you don't recall, the first poll was, what am I going to talk about? And retro video game one. And then the, the second poll was, for retro games from the NES era that I like enjoy or love or some of my favorites. So, uh, you know, Mario Brothers 3 was clearly one of them. Metroid was the other. Uh, Final Fantasy was one. And River City Ransom was the last. Now, I'll be honest, I, you know, any of them honestly are great to talk about. Uh, Mario 3 was a surprise again for me on this one. Like, I know everybody knows Mario 3. I know everybody seems to love it. But, um, you know, at the same time, like, I just thought it'd be something more obscure. Like, River City Ransom and Final Fantasy is not obscure, but you know, as opposed to all games in that era, it certainly was, you know. So, uh, but here we are, we're going to talk about Mario Brothers 3, and honestly, I'm still excited about it. I'm smiling because I love this game. Uh, pretty much, if you've played this game, you should love this game, and if not, you're a commie. That's all there is to that. So, it is a uh, 10:33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Saginaw, Michigan. We're sitting at 72 degrees, 71 degrees in the inside. Not inside me, just inside the house. The air conditioning is kicking on a little bit here and there. Uh, I would love to get some fresh air in here, but Michigan's bullshit, humid, hot weather is not allowing me to do that. So we're going to go with that crisp outside air conditioned air. So, uh, chat, how are we this evening? Thank you for popping in. See Tricky as well out there. What up, Trick? Supreme Steph, she's drinking White Claws, no doubt. Uh, Retro match, like I said, we'll talk about that, Spence. I think I got an idea for that. Um, how do you know that the people who voted for toys were little people? I don't know how to respond to that, Cat. I think that's, uh, I don't really get down on hating people that are short. I'm short. Meg and OG Zelda, your childhood first games you owned. Right on, right? One of the first games I owned, and I should have had that on that list, but nobody wants to talk about what I voted for, was Top Gun. That was one of my favorites, so. Paid 60 bucks for Sears back in the day. Which game is that, Spence? White Claws? Ha <laughs> ha. I know, what a Meg, I, I'm surprised you're up past 10, I'll be honest with you, that you're even around, so. Cap's parents didn't love him, he didn't have Mario Brothers 3, sad story, everybody. Um, yes, you should, Barry does love Mario, I love Mario, and that's, that's just the bottom line, I love Mario, and here's the thing, I could talk a B&B quickie sometime, if anybody wants to hear my issues I take with Nintendo, I have some severe issues with Nintendo fundamentally and with principles with that company and how they run their business. Now, that said, just like a lot of folks, I love their first party titles. I'm a big fan of Metroid. That's probably my favorite of their first party titles. And certainly Mario is probably in the top three. I love classic style Mario's. Now, the Mario 3Ds are enjoyable. I will play them. I put a lot of time into Mario 64 and Odyssey and some of the others, but like I love the classic 2D scrolling left to right. I love uh, this game clearly. I played Mario 1, Mario 2, this. Um, Super Nintendo, Super Mario Land. That's an amazing game. Like that or this are probably my favorite. The new Super Mario Brothers on the original DS is literally one of the best of the series as well, too. The second one wasn't as good. It was still good, but the first one was just 
leaps and bounds. Uh, it kind of rejuvenated the the series into like the modern era with, you know, then they put it on the Wii and they kind of adapted that and then Wii U and stuff like that as well too. So, um, you're not that old. Uh, yes, yes, Spence, that is one of my, uh, that's on the notes as well too. That's a really cool thing that came to play later on was, was, uh, the realization that it was a stage play, which is pretty cool. Uh, Cap says, Tone loves Mario, Luigi, Wario, really any mustached Italian man. Maybe, maybe not, but that's personal and I don't want to talk about it. So, without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, Mario Brothers 3 for the record, was probably one of the first games uh, in the Nintendo area, era that I, uh, before buying, I rented a few times, uh, the local the local uh, grocery store, gas station, whatever you saw, in good old Marion Springs, Michigan. Uh, they had NES games and VHS tapes, so uh, released, I believe it was 89, I want to say, in, um, you know, it's funny, I did all these notes on it, didn't it? What year was this release, actually, Cap? I can't believe I didn't write that down. I had all the other notes, but... I believe it was 89 in Japan. I want to say 90 in the U.S. Um, I don't know why I didn't write that down. That's awesome. Sweet. I came home, did a bunch of extra notes, and forgot the actual release date. And I can see it in my head. I want to say it was like 89, 90, though. But, uh, you know, and, and hey, actually, it might have been. I, I am I am very much a Springer. Okay, so it was 90. So was that 90 in Japan, or was that 90 over here? Because I don't. they weren't released at the same time. Mario Brothers 2, I think, came out in, like, I want to say 88. Um, but every class of Nintendo NES system, originally, early on, came out with, came with like, uh, Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, the, the combo pack. And that alone could, you could spend hours on. Mario Brothers 2 came out, and that's a whole other rabbit hole I want to go down to right here. So, 90, 91 in the U.S.? Okay, so it was 90. Okay, so 91 in the U.S. There we go. I can't believe I didn't write that shit down. Um, Mario Bros. 2 was actually uh, supposed to be a whole other game. There's a name for it, and um, they just put Mario into it because the game I think they were working on was like failing or something was going on. They wanted to get it pushed out. They wanted to go to waste. So that's why like Mario 2 like is in a weird world or whatever you want to call it, uh, as opposed to the traditional Mario ones like you know we saw in one and three and so forth. Um, this was the first time. Of the three games uh, of the Mario series, because the well, I should take, let, me, let me drop back. The original Mario Brothers game or Mario game was the that uh, um, that kind of like Donkey Kong esque arcade game, which if you've never played that, it's actually a fun game too. But it's very old school classic, like coin op. You can tell where you, you guys got jump around different platforms and Koopa and Goombas and stuff like that. Um, this was the first time that uh, they had the Koopalings, which are Bowser's kids. There were seven of them um, for all for the seven worlds, etc. Uh, and you know, basically, the, the, it basically started out with there was a note left uh, from Princess Peach, I believe, or maybe it was even Bowser, that basically said the typical like, "I took Princess, blah blah blah. You're gonna have to find her, etc." And and Mario has to go through all these different worlds um, to find her, like you know, pretty classic Mario, right? What was different about this was that the 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 world map was a different traverse than normal. Like all the other Mario's were basically like one 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 two blah blah blah. Well, it still had that numerical format. It was just that you had a different option of traversing like almost the map. Like you could go one way, you could go this way. There could be a rock in the way. You could defeat a hammer brother, get a hammer, take out this rock, get to this mushroom house, and do like. Cause there was awesome mini games they added in this game, like the matchup game to get one-ups or to get certain suits like the frog suit the game added a lot of different types of mechanics that the other ones really didn't have before um such as honestly the suits the suits were uh the frog suit was like uh shitty to use on land because all you did was hop constantly it was hard to, i mean he had a great hop when you jumped but kind of hard and awkward to use in a lot of the levels but when you get him in a water level however you could swim you didn't have to bobble around and whatnot you could actually directionally swim and move around as well too yes i believe this is the first appearance of the angry sun which was you know and they, and they added a lot of characters i actually have the strategy guide to this somewhere in my house um and it just there's a huge cast of different types of uh enemies that they added into the game outside of just the normal goombas and the koopas and stuff like that um but yeah the the the, the map was definitely different from the norm uh, it, it, one of my favorite memories, actually, is 
um, when you're moving around the map, there are certain things you can do, and it's a deep dive to tell you all this, and I can't remember all the details of it, but if you got a certain amount of coins in a level, in certain levels, when there was a wandering hammer brother, and then ended the level at a certain timestamp, it would turn one of the wandering hammer brothers into a ghost ship, which then that ghost ship would just would coin ghost ship. You get on it, and it would just be a coin boot like a, a just a ton of coins you just jump around and it was non-stop screen top top to bottom like like coins and coins and coins you can just rack up like tons of one ups by doing that um i don't remember the exact way to do that but that was one of those um <laughs> one of those rare little tricks in the game how many coins to make out king cuddles i'm gonna I'll slide in my dms later i'll holler at you so along with different uh map design uh the traversing of them you know, it, it almost gave it kind of like this pseudo open world feel because you could kind of go where you wanted to go. You could branch off and shoot. So there are some levels you could go to a higher level before you went to a, a smaller one or whatever. And sometimes you might want to because you might get a certain item that you could use easier in another one as well. Yeah, Hammer Brothers suit. That was another great suit in there. My favorite personal favorite is where uh, the one and only Tanuki suit where he's a full, full raccoon, goes in the statue mode so you can take hammers and fires. I think it's three or four seconds. That was my favorite suit, and it's still one of my favorites in all uh, Mario games. You can see it in the top right-hand corner up there in the little promo sheet of uh, uh, him in the, that, that raccoon suit. Um, but yes, yes, flying was another thing that was added into the game. So so once you're in the levels, there's there so much different mechanics going on. Uh, the, the tail would let you fly. You know, you'd get a running start. you had the little arrows. you take off and fly so you could traverse all over the sky, up and down. There was a lot of great things for that. Um, they added a lot, yep, the leaf was how you got that. So outside of normal just fire, fly, uh, the fire flower, the mushroom, you had all these cool icons and stuff like that as well too that you could uh, use and change into along with the suits. So it was really the first one that kind of just took the game of Mario and went in a lot of different directions with it. Uh, Miyamoto had, if I recall reading, he had $800,000 that, that Nintendo gave him to design this game, and I think they made that in like bundles back i'm pretty sure is how that ended up working so um he didn't have what and now well now that doesn't seem like a lot of money when you think about it but at the time eight hundred thousand dollars probably a lot of money but you know when they put uh, money in miyamoto's hands i mean he would turn it into you know twice that at least so um fantastic game love it love the, the warp whistles so like in traditional marios you would you would uh, uh uh the first one you would have to jump around find a special pipe and the second one it was pulling turnips and doing all kinds of crazy shit or still finding the different pipes in like the dark version of the worlds this one had warp whistles there was i want to say there was three maybe four one was a little bit harder to get um i know one of the hammer brothers him i think you can get the first one and actually the first level and i think it's i want to say you have to do like either an ending change or something with one of the uh um houses i don't recall but you could get one right away in the first level and just pop it and take off um but what's cool side note that I don't, before I forget it, is when you beat the game, you kind of get a new game plus of the game. They fill, you can have a total of 28 icons to save up to use if you go into a level. It was 28. When you beat the game, new game plus gave you uh, the P Wing, which was 28 of them. The P Wing, what it was, was a non stop, um, pretty much tail that would let you fly, but you didn't have to control it. It would just keep going itself, so you could literally just fly around without having to tap the tail and stuff like that so there were levels in level eight that were so fucking hard and it's just so annoying to deal with i would just pee wing through the fucking level like I think it was level eight eight or something like that it's just a bunch of little fucking airship logs and i'm just like i fly over all that shit i don't even fuck with it i don't even fuck with it uh wall behind the stage yep okay yep that's what is that the one is that the first one ant house is that one yeah yeah it's the first one yeah 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 to fall behind yep and the, and the white block yep you're right you're right that's the first one um Yep, we're talking about the uh, whistles or flutes. Are they, are they flutes? Warp flutes? Warp, I always call them warp whistles. 8-2 is nasty. Yes, 8-2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 1-3 is the very first warp whistle. There it is. So I half-ass remembered. All right, so. Um, but then later on, of course, it was discovered that uh, Spence had talked about it, was that uh, it was a stage play. If you look at it from um, uh, an, an aesthetic look at it, the curtains and everything, everything's on strings. It was, and I don't know what, necessarily relevance it has necessarily just kind of a cool thing to know that it was basically a big play they were doing which has always at that point from this from uh afterwards 
has always questioned is the entire thing all has, has mario always been a stage play has it always been a play or not well i mean i don't know if that's still really much of a debate but it was just cool that mario 3 was uh you know done kind of like a like an entire play so really cool koopalings there's some great ones ludwig von koopa um Trying to think of some of the other ones. Ludwig was always my favorite. He had the big, he looked like uh, uh, Albert Einstein, actually. It was kind of the whole, I think, part of the shtick with that one. Um, Eric Von Koopa, I think, was another one or something like that. So if anybody can name them all, Wendy, yeah, Morton Jr., as I say, if anybody can name them all, it's probably Spence. I would not doubt it. So um, the Mario movie, we're not, yeah, that's, that's a whole, that's a whole other ball game to get into. We're talking about that Mario movie, right? So, so what was unique about this game was outside of the fact that uh, it was a new Mario game. It was really sweet. There was a lot of uh, um, there was a lot of TV promo for this, uh, and it was. And I remember this very well. So here we're gonna play it. We're gonna play the original promo trailer for Mario Three in America. See if you guys remember this. I'm gonna play this, and then, then I got Mario! something else to show you. Mario. It's real Mario! simple. Mario! Remember this? I'll never forget it. As a kid, I'll never forget it. Like I said, I rented this a lot, but um, after a while, I finally, um, I think it was a friend at school, he got it and didn't like it or something, and I think I traded him something. Back in the day, you traded NES cartridges for other All NES stuff. I think I traded him something Mario for that, so from Nintendo. I ended up now getting Mario 3 not long after its release and renting it after a few times, and I would stay up all night playing it, like, just trying to discover, like, little secrets, you know, some of the P switches to turn stuff into coins, like, some of the desert levels had just, like, mountains and pyramids full of coins and stuff like that trying to figure out every little secret that you could um and that was before i actually ended up getting the strategy guide and then once i got that then it became a whole other deep dive because there were some crazy tricks that you didn't know about uh so that was the original commercial one of my favorite things uh about that era and that time was if anybody was a kid around this and old like me and you'd always beg mom and dad take you to mcdonald's why was that because you wanted to get that fucking sweet Mario Brothers 3 swag. And I'll tell you what, that one on the far left was the first one I had, and it was always my favorite because you push him down, he would, he would flip. You know, it was supposed to be the flying thing. I don't know if I ever got the Koopa. I made a long time afterwards, might have gotten the Koopa, but I definitely had the Mario one on the, the far left over there, the squeeze down. I had the Goomba, which you just, he, he would kind of do like a flip as well, too. Um, I don't remember what the other Mario did. I think his tail just kind of like went spun around or something like that. You had 10, Ant House had 10 Goombas. <laughs> oh my God, that's terrible. Poor guy, only had 10 Goombas. Well, it's funny you should bring that up, Tricky, because hold your butt. Just hold your butt. You just, just hold your butt, all right? And then you had Luigi, Luigi running around. He, he's like a uh, pullback. He would just kind of like zoom around, zoom around on his little cloud there, right? fucking sweet those toys were fucking awesome now the only other toys that i will bring up two two more of that era that i love that weren't mario were the transformer food ones i loved and the uh for some reason the bambi toys from the happy meals back in the day always wanted a thumper finally finally after like 10 of them finally got my thumper sick of getting fucking uh what was the skunk's name flower a ton of those stage five was unique split in two levels the cloud part was cool oh yeah yeah yeah, the, the, again, the level designs in this one was like for even for the time, like, is it's honestly, you <laughs> still play to them. Uh, really, I think that Mario Three kind of just took the, like I said, the took took Mario franchise and just really evolved it into what it is now. I mean, when you look at like Super Mario Land on uh, Super Nintendo, I mean, it's basically Super Mario Three on steroids, and it just adds more stuff. You know, the cape instead of the the, the leaf as much as kind of the prominent thing for that, which sucked because, like, the cape's cool, but I always liked the leaf, honestly, you know? Um, but that that game was massive, too. That That's that's still one of the greats. I could play that one over and over, and I know I have, uh, much like Mario 3. But don't forget, if you ever find them them toys, remember that, uh, you know, Tone's still looking for that Goomba. I don't know if I ever, not the Goomba, but the, the Koopa. I don't think I ever got the Koopa. I don't think I ever got the Koopa. That makes me feel terrible to think about that i never got that koopa raccoon tail cape yeah that's how i feel about it the cape's cool don't get me wrong but give me that give me that uh give me that uh, little raccoon tail all day all right a little sippy sip of that fireball all right so here's where it gets fun tricky already had to do it now 
one of the best promos that happened with this game was how it cross promoted into the one and only movie The Wizard with Fred Savage aka in Germany called Joystick Heroes there's a little fun fact for you in Germany it's called Joystick Heroes uh, basically what they did was the the guys working on the movie The Wizard went to Nintendo and said hey we want to we want to cross promo with you somehow or what it was and they happened to be um, either it had been released already in Japan and not revealed yet in America, but it was the first time America got revealed with it, was uh, Mario 3 in the game, or excuse me, in the movie, and it was a surprise to everybody. Now, I don't remember if they had the actual trailer had the Mario 3. I want to say it may have, but let's watch the original trailer for The Wizard, a.k.a. Joystick Heroes in Germany. All right, here we go. Fred's Zapp. This is classic. Now the volume, if the volume's a little low, I can turn it up. You let me know, everybody. I don't know if you can hear over the ant house dropping the beats. It's probably a little bit of quiet. I think it's a little quiet. Hard to find good quality stuff. Oh, the power glove is so bad. Look at this. California? Right? Everybody loves this movie. Still love this movie. Of note, people that only get a brief shot in this, uh, Christian Slater was in this. That was Fred's older brother. And uh, one of the Bridges brothers, uh, Bo Bridges, was the dad. Yup, with the dinosaur. Yup. Oh, yeah. Classic. Now, anybody from this era that was old as me, when Fred Savage was in a movie, it was a big fucking deal. You know, everybody wanted to be his best friend. You idolized Fred Savage back then. Winnie Cooper, he had Winnie Cooper, you know. He was in fucking, he hung out with Ham, Howie Mandel and Little Monsters. You've never seen this movie? Are you kidding me? This is a classic. You know, this was another one of those big iconic video game kind of movies from back in the day that really brought video games into like a center spotlight without making them like super dumb and campy, you know? I know, I know. She's she's still a little baby, though, probably. I think she's a young one. And she was sheltered. Yeah, that, that was in the trailer. There it is, yep. That's why everybody remembers, because that was actually in the trailer itself. There he is. Oh, man. Down to three of them. That classic spot. Anytime you play that in that level, you always think about, oh, it's from the movie. The Wizard's awesome. The Wizard. You're still a baby, though. Right? Now, who wants to watch that? Huh? Who wants to watch The Wizard? I know I want to watch The Wizard now after fucking with this the last couple days. That's Annie from Goonies in it. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think the girl that was in this movie actually really did a whole lot of acting after. Is it? Is it Annie from Goonies, really? That's a great question. I really don't know the answer. If anybody knows that answer, look it up. Let me know. Yes, Wonder Years for the win. Absolutely, absolutely. So that alone, I, like, I'll never forget the first time seeing that movie. First of all, the Power Glove, right? The Power Glove. Sent me an angel, son. That's right. Um, the Power Glove. I don't know if anybody else had a power glove. I was fortunate enough to have a power glove. It was given to me, like, everybody had that, like, uh, maybe everybody didn't, but I had that one family friend lady that was, you know, not really an aunt, but you called her aunt, and she would buy you gifts and stuff like that. She had money or something like that. I don't remember. She was a sweetheart, though. But she'd always give us, me and my sister, gifts. Uh, she gave us a power glove one time. Back in the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s, that fucker was, like, 70-something bucks. That was no cheap thing. But she was also cool like that. She got us a fucking power glove. And for all intents and purposes, I didn't have a lot of games that worked properly with it. It was definitely, you know, uh, it, it was almost useless. But there were some games when you could find them and get them that were awesome with it. Uh, Punch-Out being one, uh, you know, uh, Rad Racer, things like that. I would just play Mario Brothers, and you could, like, program and do different stuff. But you could, have, you could use this to bounce and stuff like that. So all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But um, I think I got one more little clip. It might be the actual full clip of some of the ending of Super! 
how this got brother. revealed. So instead of just watching a little piece of it, but, um, I won't play the whole thing. But this is this is a big piece of the. Actual, so they, yeah, this is the first time. This is the first time it was revealed in North America. Like you got to see it. And this is like the little trailer and this and whatnot. So, um, I don't know if anybody else back then was like, super hyped about it like I was, but I was blown away by it, like, you know, promoting a, a brand new video game that you never seen before in a movie, like, no! with Red Savage, and, like, and uh, Christian Slater, and, like, and, uh, Scarlet, and, uh, you can see, like, the shadows and things like that, how you can touch them. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back! She was in Lucas. Uh, yeah, the girl from Goonies was in Lucas. Very high. Amazing movie. Also, uh, based on Lydia. Why didn't you tell me? He's a finalist. Yep, Bo Bridges and Christian Slater. What's cool is this is that they, Bo at the beginning, his dad couldn't figure out the whole game. I don't understand the game. The guy who's playing video games, well, kids are gone, run away, so then he, he, he's in a hotel room. Nintendo's in the back of the truck, and then Christian pulled out, and he's playing, and then he gets completely hooked in You know, so now that Dad's played the game, now he's a new fan. It's like how my dad was about it, too. My dad thought video games were a joke, and then he played Top Gun on the Nintendo, and thought, hey, he was mad with it. I'm kidding. Come on, Tony, I love you! Stop by him, Tony! Winona Ryder, yup, yup. Was it her first movie? Before Beetlejuice, maybe? He finds a warp, he can jump forwards. What's the best part of the movie, Anna? Is the, uh, this, or the... Twenty-four thousand, one hundred and fifty. Jimmy Wood, twenty-six thousand, three hundred and forty. What? Well, we He's got to pull him out. I flushed him out. Of course, we still have a deal, Mrs. Baby. Shut up. Sure. So I know Mario Three over the years has been had like kind of like a. I actually poured it over on the Super Nintendo with uh, Super Mario All-Stars, so got a little bit of upgrade then too. And I want to say on the Wii Virtual Console, it also saw someone along with that one point of view I think the Wii also had the So Mario 3 still does live out there, and I believe even the Switch right now, if you have uh, Nintendo Online, Hey, Laura, emulator, which, again, if you've never played it, I'm sure everybody has played it, but it's, it's, to me, it's still one of the best games down in the world. Everything's Kooklings, everything about the game, the level design, suits, all that stuff, amazing, all that stuff, I absolutely love. It's actually, like I said, probably still... Lucas Barton, Matt. I don't know if I'd say it's still my favorite Mario, but it's hard to say it would be Come on, you mess with the match. There was a trick to, to, to match them up, too. I couldn't. Do it. There's definitely a trick to try and get the, the flower every time. It's like literally about a 45 degree angle jump to try and get that flower every time you get the max on this one, too. Jimmy, that's that's right. That's right. But you guys get the point. You, you guys all get the point. I would sit here and watch this all day and then and, you know, end up watching The Wizard all night, so which is perfectly fine. Maybe we'll do that sometime in the Discord or something. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. This is a uh, this is a game that I really, really put a lot of time into. You know, uh, was just kind of one of those platformers back in the you know old days that really put a lot of substance into the game. And it wasn't just like like how a normal Mario Brothers was, you know, one 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 two and stuff like that. And going forward, there was a lot of little neat elements to it with a lot of the stuff they added into it and. You know, again, I, I, I have crazy fond memories of it. Uh, late night gaming sessions, um, and then finally owning it, and I would just play it for hours over and over and over. And you would think, and of course, we didn't have it back then. That was how it worked with games. Like, you would beat a game. You paid X amount of money for a game, whether it was a four-hour long game or a 12-hour long game. You just kept going over and over through them. You had another choice. You didn't have, like, what we have now for options and games and constant, like, downloadable stuff and things like that but back then that's all we had when you bought a game cart you that was it you probably weren't going to get another game cart for a long time unless you rented one and even then that was a you know a short amount of time that you had for them and you you there were a lot of duds there's a lot of fucking duds in the nes era 
Some people remember NES gaming fondly. I see it kind of half and half. Like, it's great. I love the nostalgia of it. I, I, I understand it. But you don't find me too often going back and playing them because the guys that made games for Nintendo home consoles had just come out of the coin-op era of arcade games. So the games were hard on the NES because they didn't know how to differentiate the fact that you weren't... It, you didn't need to keep pumping quarters into them to make them ridiculously hard and die all the time. And that's why some games, you know, you had three lives and it was like you, you would die a third of the way through and have to start from the beginning again. That, you know, that's definitely a lot different when it came to uh, the games these days, which are much more casual and understand that your time is limited and things like that. So, you know, we, I could talk for hours about that as well, too. Um, but what you guys thought? So you guys, it sounds like a lot of you out there are fans, enjoyed it, love playing it, still like it maybe. Some of you haven't played it. Or some of you haven't even seen The Wizard. We won't name names, Megan. Renting them was great though, Tricky. I, I had a, there was a lot of games back in the day that I remember renting and never owning, but fondly remember playing or dabbling in and not ever, you know, um, playing again and wishing I had, you know. Um, that's one thing that's cool about emulators and stuff like that when you can do that on like PCs or you know do the uh, you know Raspberry Pi stuff and you're not supposed to but you know going back and playing some of those games and stuff like that passing passing night welcome nice to see you too uh, still one of your favorite games this is still one of your favorite that's awesome yeah fantastic it is I am honestly like again when it comes to Nintendo I, I there, there's a lot of this that and the other I can get into about them but their first party games that they ride on there's a reason why they're great games they make awesome first party titles and honestly mario to this day is still a great game now the 3d marios are fun too i played a lot of mario 64 i could go on about that one for another half hour i put a shit ton into that game to get all 120 stars it's a great game but i still prefer traditional mario you know i, I loved it and i still do uh death dispenser running games like Mega Manager. Yeah, Ninja Turtles, that's a whole other ball game, too. I never actually beat that without a Game Genie, and I beat a lot of hard-ass games. I mean, I beat Ninja Gaiden. That's a pretty fucking hard one to beat alone. Um, yeah, Panic, I did, too, yeah. Mario 2 and me, I beat Mario 2, but I never felt... It was fun, but it always just... I never felt the actual draw to it. It always felt... It just never felt right to me. Like, I still like it. I don't dislike the game. I would still play it. But, you know, being that it was supposed to be a whole other different game, like, it just, it's not, a, it's not a traditional Mario, you know. It's still fun, for sure. I like the kind of act stuff they do, too, and it kind of coincides with going to 3 being a play. Yeah, Mario 64 was awesome, man. I was, I, still, like, Mario Odyssey on the Switch, to me, is the closest 3D Mario to feeling like 64 Mario than any of the 3D Marios that's come out since. Which there's a ton. And Ninja Turtles was... Has to be impossible to be without a game genie. I mean, when you get to the, when you're in the techno, I can get to the techno drone. I can't. I can get to Shredder in Ninja Turtles. I can't. I can't beat him. There's no way. There's no way. Super Mario World are two of my favorites. Yeah, buried. Yep. Yep. All that Mario goodness. Double Dragon was great. That was another one we had. Like I was fortunate. A lot of my friends growing up had Nintendos. In one family, um, they had uh, both their families worked in the. Auto it was actually the Pattersons. Buried. Um, Shane and Damien, they had a ton of Nintendo games. So I had an I had a huge library that I had access to that I could borrow, play, and go over there and hang out and fuck around with. We played a lot. I was real fortunate that they had a lot of NES games that I was able to get myself involved in. Yeah, the Ninja Turtle game was a fantastic. I was huge into Turtles at the time too. The Mario movie was no Robocop 3. King. River City Ransom is the game. That's that's the game. I, that's why I, I could have talked about that. And I still, I'll probably talk about River City Ransom one of these times on B&B Quickie. Um, I'm about to wrap it up here, but I, I definitely think River City Ransom will be one of the ones I'm going to get into. I never actually played the Bucky O'Hare game, Cap. I never actually did. I love the cartoon. Dragon Quest 3 blew me. Uh, Dragon, Dragon Warrior 1... Really, really far as RPGs was one I played a lot and never beat. That was that was like next level. You had to really like. It wasn't like Final Fantasy kind of like Final Fantasy or Fortune of kind of almost like was able to kind of lead your hand in some way. Dragon Warrior One did not. You really had to figure shit out. Small compared to two, and then way smaller. Damn, I see. I, I never played much outside of Dragon Warrior, but then just some Dragon Quests later. Holy shit! Oh my god! 
That's really Cousin Keith. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Holy shit. And he named himself Cousin Keith, too. I, after, after you talked to me on my Facebook, on the Banter and Babble Facebook, uh, Cousin Keith, I said, hey. <laughs> of course, I called you Cousin Keith. Right? I'm like, does Cousin Keith watch Banter and Babble? He just mentioned something about the pops. That's really funny. Give this guy. Yeah, he wants that Deku pop. Yeah, I know. Tomorrow night, 9 p.m., twitch.tv forward slash right here, Banter and Babble. Full proper show. So... I'm going to wind it on down, everybody. Um, first thing, a couple things I want to say. Uh, of course, appreciate everybody stopping through for this late night B&B quickie to talk about one of the greatest NES games of all time. Um, dude is going to be doing a B&B quickie sometime later this week. I believe it's Thursday. He's going to talk about the Relic. Um, I'm sure he'll have more information for everybody on that soon. Um, of course, tomorrow, the big thing to talk about is, uh, you know, we got... Another BNB proper. We got a lot of topics, as always, to go over. A lot of random stuff's gonna be coming through. We got a really sweet movie. If you've not seen the movie Greyhound, sneak peek, try to watch it. It's a good movie. Tom Hanks is awesome, as always. Very, very to the point. There's not a lot of drama bullshit. It's a go, go, go movie and very intense. Visually, very, very, uh, really puts you in the movie. Um, I was really, really, really into it. Yeah, I'm wrapping it up. I'm getting there, but I'm always long-winded, Meg. Don't worry about it. I'm doing my thing. Um, so, yes, tomorrow night, be here, 9 p.m. Eastern Live. We do have that giveaway. Everybody's already talking about it. Mossman and Deku are still available for that giveaway. Now, I can tell you, talking through Fets, who we want to thank again for sponsoring this, if you're looking for that Deku or that Mossman, he potentially may have. Have them at his store. Holler at me. DM me or DM him. Talk to him. You still might be able to find one if you need to get one. Um, just this one we're giving away for free in a giveaway. So, uh, Last one was King. King won Elton John. And the prior before that was Biggie goes to Zombie. Uh, if those haven't been shipped yet this week, I'm a smack dude, but I'm pretty sure they've been shipped. You guys should see them soon. Um, and other than that... Last thing I guess I'll say is for my next b, &B Quickie will be next week. Uh, since the wrestling match, the retro wrestling match was the second one, I think it's only fair that my next b, &B Quickie I talk about a retro wrestling match. Now, I'm not going to do like Monday Wars era. I'm not going to do like the WCW Raw era of Monday Wars. I think there's, there's some great matches clearly in there, but I also think... Um, that's that's low hanging fruit to a degree. So I'm looking to more like old school WCW, WCW, or uh, maybe some gimmick era uh, WWF. And I'm not gonna do like again low hanging fruit. I'm not gonna do WrestleMania three um, with you know Ricky the Steamboat and Macho Man. That's low hanging fruit. Everybody knows that that's amazing. Kingdom Hearts. Talk about that. Passing night. Let me say something before I move on and drop the stream. You don't want me talking about that on stream because you'll probably come over here and try to stab me. You do not want me talking about that thing on stream. So uh, maybe I'll do another Twitter poll, or if you guys got ideas, I don't. the 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 bots aren't working again on BNB Quickie, and I still couldn't figure it out. If you want to get into my Discord, there's a link right here. If you see it right about in the in the about banter and babble, there's a link right there. Discord. If you guys use Discord, want to hang out in the Discord, we'd love to have you chat with us it gets really deviant had to create a whole new channel because some of us get really crazy in there crazy not safe for work one um but pop in there if you got some ideas for the show like we did last week talking about you know any brainstorming if you want to talk about a specific match from like early 90s late 80s wcw or wwf let me know let's talk about it and maybe we'll bring it up and maybe that's what i'll talk about next week marvel marvel what what do you want to get into marvel about Classic match. Oh, yeah, of course, Cap. Right, Cap. Yeah, right, right. Okay, Cap. Okay, okay, Cap. Cap, okay, okay, okay. Um, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Uh, please, if you've got time tomorrow, we'd love to have you for banter and babble proper. 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Come talk about all these great topics we're going to have for you. Getting that giveaway. Sponsored by Fets. And honestly, that's it. Awesome. Thanks for coming through, guys. I appreciate you all. Everybody have a fantastic evening. As always, I want to say, be safe, be well, wash your hands, 
Wash your butts. Looking at you, Cousin Keith. You guys have a great night. I'll see you soon. Appreciate you. Love you. Thank you.